Hi, it's Jeff Challen, one of the CS125 instructors. So now that we have Eclipse set up, I want to talk about how to use version control. Uh, in this class this semester, we're going to be using a version control system called Subversion. Um, Subversion is one of the many ways that you have at your disposal to manage how you make changes to software projects. And version control is a key part of how programmers manage and share things that they're working on. Um, so there's a little bit of text on the web page that you might want to look at, um, but you know, learning how to use uh, version control well is something that's really important. Even people in this class who have significant programming experience may not have learned how to use some of these tools that people use when they work in larger groups. Um, and you might be wondering a little bit, you know, why would I use something like Subversion? I mean, there's all these existing tools like Dropbox, you know, Google Drive, uh, Box, that allow me to share things with other people, share files and folders, make them accessible with other people um, in some nice ways. And there are, so there are a couple of features, really two core features here that I highlight on the website that are really important uh, to understand as far as version control works. So the first thing is that uh, version control for software projects produces versions of the entire project. So there's typically a way to tell the version control system, I want to save all of the files in the repository at, as they were at this exact moment. So that's sometimes called committing. It means you're telling the version control system, remember the state of all these files together forever. And this is really important when you work on software because usually you're making changes to multiple files to accomplish something. And so it doesn't really make sense to think about versions of one file separated from versions of another file. So Subversion and Git and pretty much uh, all the other version control systems that people use keep track of the state of the entire repository. So when you commit things, it saves how everything looked at that point in time all the files that are part of that project or all the files that are part of that repository. So that's one important uh, difference between systems like Subversion and things like Google Drive or Dropbox. The other really important feature that uh, Subversion has um, and that Git has and other things, it allows you to merge changes to files in an intelligent way. This is totally hopeless when you use certain other tools. So if you give me a Word document and I make some changes to it, and then you make some changes to it later, uh, we have two different versions of the document and it's going to be extremely difficult to merge those changes together automatically. Uh, and this has to do partly with how the document is structured. Source code, on the other hand, uh, usually lends itself to automatic merging. So let's say that Alice changes one part of a file and Bob changes another part of a file. As long as their changes don't conflict with each other, as long as they didn't try to change the same lines of the source code, many version control systems will be able to intelligently produce a version of the file that contains both their changes. And that's really important and really useful when you work on software projects with other people. Okay, so that's my pitch for, you know, why use Subversion. Let's start getting it set up to use with uh, Eclipse and uh, for this class. So the first thing we have to do, uh, once we've installed all the plugins, so this screencast assumes that you've followed the previous instructions about how to get Eclipse set up. And at this point, what we're going to do is tell Eclipse about the repository that we've created for you for this class. So uh, we've set up repositories on a remote server. The URL is right here. So this is uh, subversion.ews at illinois.edu, SVN, F7, FA17, CS125. So that's the root of our repository. That's where all of your repositories live. Um, however, your repository lives in a different location, and it's based on your net ID. I have a couple of examples here to sort of get you going. They're kind of silly ones based on um, usernames that my... Um, that my animals might have used. And so here's an example for my dog Choo Choo. Uh, here's my example to, for how to take that base URL and compute the URL that's correct for you. So you take the base URL, you add your net ID to it. So here's my example. Um, I'm gonna uh, copy that, uh, copy this address. Um, and then I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to tell Eclipse that I want to use that as one of the repositories that I'm going to save my source code in. So I go over to Eclipse, and now this is a little bit tricky. If you're not already in the SVM repository perspective, and I am, but I'm going to show you how to do this anyway, I go down to Perspective, Open Perspective. Um, if it's not listed, click on Other. In this case, it is listed, so I'm going to click SVM Repository uh, View. 
And now here's my list of SVN repositories, or subversion repositories that I'm using. It's currently empty, so I need to add this. So I go to the add dialog. I'm going to paste that URL that I, uh, that I cut and pasted a minute ago. And I can put in my authentication credentials right here. I think if I hit finish, what will happen? Nope, it didn't happen. Let's see. Oh, I think I need to... Hmm. Let's see what happens here. So, oh, it's, it seems like it saved my credentials from the last time. I actually added this repository previously. Uh, let me walk through that again. Uh, once you have something added, you can also discard location and start over. So let's do this one more time, and I'll show you how to get your authentication credentials in there. So I start with the URL, and then down here, I'm going to put my uh, Illinois Net ID, and then my... Oops, is helpful. My password. I would encourage you to use a password manager like LastPass so that you can save strong passwords. Mine's pretty good. Um, and hit finish here. Okay, once that's done, you'll see the repository URL over here in the repository explorer view. And if I click on it, what I should be able to do is I should be able to see my repository. So right at the top of this list is my Challen uh, repository that's part of that server, and it's empty. That's good, so I haven't added anything to it or configured anything uh, in it yet. Um, so that's the first part of uh, this uh, part of your setup. Uh, once you get to this point, um, you can continue on with the next screencast.